<laughs> all right boys the day is here we have all of our parts no you i haven't shown none of this yet i don't know why i decided i was going to get all the parts that i needed before i put a video together but we got all the stuff for the freaking transmission for the step side all the transmission stuff is here all the transmission stuff is here literally i that's i have weeks i've been putting this stuff together actually i bought the transmission uh, a couple of months ago now sweating like a pig putting all this crap in here it's hot in this garage anyway let's get into it everything we got going on um we'll start at the back of the block work our way back here we go all right boys so we're starting here with our uh, flywheel 168 tooth flywheel like you know small block to use this is a 25 pound 22 pound 25 pound something like that it's 25 pound this is a 25 pound um the flywheel same i mean it's nothing crazy special or whatever it's just a, a flywheel i went ahead with a 25 pound flywheel because i still want a decent amount of drivability and i was scared to go lighter than that and then end up with no drivability in the in the truck so 25 pound it is and everything i read said the heavier the vehicle you know it's better to have a heavier flywheel i wanted to get like an 18 pound i decided against it we ended up with a 25 pound it'll work great the engine already revs really fast and it's got plenty of power to pull it maybe someday if i decide i want to go with the lighter one i will it's not like it's the hardest thing in the world to do next thing we went with is a spec um this i think the stage three six puck clutch i went six puck because i wanted it to be lighter first off um it is still a sprung clutch it's not just a stagnant clutch still sprung um that whole bit i went with their clutches their whole their pressure plate as well the whole thing they send you a throw out bearing a uh, new pilot bearing and a tool for um setting your clutch for centering your clutch the one thing that i was pretty impressed with about this thing is every clutch i've done this is what it looks like but on this side <laughs> i've never seen a concaved i've never seen concaved clutch fingers before but that's the way spec does it i guess so that's what we got here um super excited about this clutch this thing was stupid expensive but the reason i went with spec is because spec will sell me just this i don't have to buy the whole clutch You're like if my pressure plate's still good i don't have to buy it i can buy just the friction disc so that's why i went with them the next thing we went with uh we went with the mcleod uh hydraulic um we went with the mcleod hydraulic uh what is this thing clutch master clutch system setup so i guess at this point we should talk about this is going in a 79 gmc c1500 so it's a basically a c10 um it's step side if you haven't seen it there's videos on the channel about it you can go back and watch those um this truck has never been a hydraulic um throwout bearing so i'm putting a hydraulic throwout bearing in it and that entails putting in the master and or slave i guess what are you going to call it and all that stuff so i went with the mcleod setup for it the whole kit um there's the the bearing itself i already put it in here um that's what it comes with it comes with this the actual bearing itself some spacers a reservoir to, to mount to the top of the uh slave and then a remote reservoir as well here this is the mount for a remote, remote reservoir i mean it just all, all sorts you know your hoses you got some steel braided back here this came off the transmission this is what didn't come with the kit but all that stuff in there so i mean it's a complete kit you don't have to buy anything else to go with it so and then it's the swivel up here so it can go these can go whatever direction you want them to um though obviously they'll go that way but um and then this is anodized whatever color you want to call that burgundy i think <laughs> but yeah i mean obviously nobody's ever going to see it so that kind of sucks but so we're going with a, a lakewood safety bell housing this is a, a steel bell housing it's all 316 material um this is sfi approved so you know most drag strips well as far as i know it's a general thing is you have to be able you have to have an sfi bell housing if you're doing faster than 1149 and a quarter um I don't really have any plans to go drag racing i mean maybe but i don't i definitely don't think i'm going to be going faster than 1150 that's for sure but i i got this bell housing strictly for safety because you know parts go bad that's just the way it is things aren't 
you know, things are messed up when you get them, stuff like that. If that flywheel or that clutch or any of that stuff blows up inside this bell housing, this bell housing is going to maintain that and it's not going to cut my feet off. So that's why I bought that. This is a shield that goes uh, up against the, the block of, of your engine, it goes up against your engine block to, so for the same thing, if any of that stuff over there explodes, this protects the back of your engine from getting destroyed while that stuff's exploding. Um, it took me a long time to decide upon this bell housing and doing the measurements and making sure everything was going to work like it's supposed to. So I highly recommend that if you're looking for a bell housing, a safety bell housing, that you do all the research, measure the bell housing that came out, measure your, out, your input shaft, do all the measuring you can and make sure you're getting exactly what you need before you buy anything because these are expensive. This freaking bell housing is not cheap. So you need to get that done. Um, these are the bolts that came with the bell housing. You actually get some some nice uh, um, Allen head bolts to come with it, regular hex head bolts. So I went ahead and bought some 12 point ARP flywheel bolts. Uh, they didn't have any ARPs and it was like a month out to get some. So I went with the uh, Milliden ink. Um, pressure plate bolts same they're the same type of quality as arp i mean you're really just buying a name when you buy arp a lot of people build fasteners as, as well as they do but we have so that's all the accompanying parts for the transmission now the transmission itself i went ahead i found this i got a good deal on it um guy had purchased it had it for about a year and decided instead of doing like a resto mod type of deal on a Corvette, he was just gonna go ahead and restore it. So he, then he, at that point, decided that he didn't want this transmission, it had sat in his shop for about a year, and then I went ahead and bought it from him. Uh, I paid $1,700 for this transmission. This transmission new is 2,500 if you buy it from wherever, or if you buy it from Tremec, you buy it from American Power, you buy it from any of those people, it's $2,500. Um, I went ahead and I just bought the uh, American Power Train yoke that they build for this so this is a slip yoke transmission and uh that's kind of a weird thing with this truck because the the uh, transmission that came out of it is not a slip yoke it is a um the well the slip is in the drive line so there is a there is a slip yoke sort of in it but it's in the middle of the drive line two-piece drive line so on and so forth um but yeah, that's it. Uh, this transmission, this is the um, 287 first gear. So it's the longer gear ratio transmission than um, the other one. You can get this one, which is the 287 first, or you can get, I think it's a 317 first is the other version of it. <coughs> For me, I don't really think it matters a whole heck of a lot. I actually am kind of glad that I got the shorter gear ratio because the transmission that came out of it, the technical first, is like a 305 first and it was super short so having a uh, little longer first gear i think is going to be an enjoyable uh enjoyable deal with this transmission um this transmission like i said it's tko 600 and what that means is well the 600 means that it is capable that they've rated it not it's capable of more but they have rated it uh to withstand 600 foot pounds so the engine in the truck is running uh, right about 500 foot pounds of the crank so this plenty of plenty plenty tough enough to hold um, what I'm gonna ask it to so um, yeah got a lot of parts got a lot of things to do got a lot of stuff to get after but I just wanted to, wanted to make this video and uh, kind of show everybody what we're doing here it's a lot easier to show parts when they're on the bench than when they're in the truck so yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. This is the most high-end stuff I've ever owned for anything ever, and I'm putting it in a freaking 1979 turd. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a big old thumbs up. Here for the first time, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you all in the next one.